Hi everyone, and welcome to the beginning algebra live lecture number three. Um, I had to take the last two weeks off, but I'm hoping to get back on my regular schedule and be doing this every Wednesday at six until I finish the curriculum. So last time we were looking at how to do exponents and uh, square roots and stuff on negative numbers specifically. That's what we were kind of focusing on. So today we're going to finish up the packet three and work on order of operations. So the order of operations is a way to let you know when you have a whole string of math that you need to do, what thing to do first. Um, this is just an agreed upon um, methodology to make sure everyone gets the exact same answer for a math problem given to them. So usually you'd call this an expression, you don't call it an equation because there's no like equal sign in it, you just uh, say I want to simplify this expression. So if there's a bunch of math stuff, um, a bunch of multiplication, addition, subtraction, things like that, and you want to figure out what order to do it in, you're going to use the order of operations, which is um, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division at the same time, but from left to right, and then addition and subtraction um, at the same time from left to right. So the there's a little like phrase that helps you to remember it's please excuse my dear aunt sally and the most important thing about it um, is that you do anything with parentheses first anything with exponents second so if you have parentheses um, that could also be any other type of grouping symbol like sometimes you'll see brackets like square brackets um, those are usually used if there's like multiple parentheses to kind of help you be able to see like where one starts and where the other one ends and if you have exponents on parentheses, you need to make sure to do anything inside the parentheses first. So when you see parentheses, that means stuff inside the parentheses first, okay? Because sometimes the parentheses are used to represent multiplication, okay? Like if you have three times negative three and the negative three is in parentheses, it doesn't mean do that first, it just means multiplication, okay? So stuff inside parentheses first, then exponents, and then multiplication and division. You have to do it from left to right. Okay, um, and then addition and subtraction are the very last thing, and that has to be done from left to right. So the reason the multiplication and division being done from left to right is really important is because division, remember, while multiplication you can do it in any order you want, division you can't. So division throws kind of like a wrench in the whole thing, and once you get that, you need to do, make sure you do it in the correct order. Same thing with addition and subtraction. Um, technically, you can add in whatever order you want. But once you put that subtraction in there, you got to make sure that you do it from left to right. So it's best just to do it in that order, just to save yourself some grief, okay? So let's look at some examples of this. Ah, whoa! Ma, that thing is not working on me, for me here. Let's use the mouse instead. Okay, so if we have 7 plus 2 times 8 squared. So, um... Parentheses are the first thing, but we don't have any parentheses here, so the next thing is exponents. So we're going to do 8 squared. So we'll do 7 plus 2 times 8 squared is 16. Now when you do these, I highly recommend that you fully write out everything you're doing and write it out in a clear, um, in a clear way. So Notice I wrote the 7 plus 2 and the times. I wrote everything exactly as it was to show, well, the only thing I did right now in this first step is the 8 squared. The clearer you are in your steps, the easier it is for you to find if you made any mistakes. Um, it's easier for your instructor to look at it. Um, but it also, like, it just helps to make sure that you're doing everything kind of in a clear, methodical way. Because that's what this is. Order of operations about... A method it's about doing things in a correct order and if you're not methodical about it then you're not necessarily going to be um, using the method correctly um, I see a lot of students who will just do stuff like they'll do like the addition over here and the subtraction over here and it's not really helpful and when I have to grade stuff like that specifically it's really hard for me to give partial credit because I can't tell what they were doing um, but if they do it in this clear step-by-step -step method I can see oh well here's where they made the small mistake and they're gonna get more credit for it in that sense Okay, I, let's get back on track. So, um, 
We did exponents. The next thing is multiplication and division from left to right. Well, there's only one multiplication, so we'll just go ahead and do that. So equals seven plus. So I can do the two times six, which is 32. Okay. And now the only thing is left that's left is addition. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So seven plus 32 is 39. Now, if you put this in a graphing calculator, like the TI-84, it will honor um, order of operations, as long as you correctly put things in. Um, most of the time, though, uh, people don't put in um, division correctly, especially if you have this huge fraction. So you have to be really careful that you're putting it in correctly and using parentheses, because sometimes you have to put parentheses in the calculator that you don't have to do if you write it out. Um, so uh, graphing calculators like TI-84s will um, honor order of operations, but if you're just trying to use a calculator like the one on your phone, it's not going to understand um, what to do. If you did 7 plus 2 times 8 times uh, squared, it's going to square the whole thing because it doesn't understand um, that method. Okay, let's try the next one. All right, this time we have parentheses. So we have 4 divided by 2 squared plus 5 minus 3 times 2. Okay, so... I need to do the stuff inside the parentheses first, so there's some stuff in there. So let's just go ahead and write everything up to that. 4 divided by 2 squared plus, and then in parentheses, is 5 minus 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2 times 2. And let me scooch this up a little bit so I can see it better. Okay. All right, so now we do exponents. So it's 4 divided by 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times 2, okay? Now we do um, multiplication and division from left to right. So let's just go ahead and do them one at a time. 4 divided by 4 is 1, then plus 2 times 2. And then 2 times 2 is 4. So... Now all we have left is this addition, so 1 plus 4 is a 5. Now when you get a little better, um, or not, maybe not better is not the best word, but when you get more comfortable with doing um, these types of expressions and order of operations, you'll find, where's my, my pen, get my highlighter here, you'll find that things like this, ah, that is not what I wanted, where's the highlighter? This is it here, I think this is it. Here and here. So I had a division and a multiplication, but they were separated by an addition. You'll find that when you have stuff like that, you can actually do them at the same time. I could have done one plus four, like I could have stepped, skipped a little step. So when it comes to the multiplication and addition being done from left to right, that's just making sure that if you have a whole string of them, you do them in the right order. But as soon as you throw some additions in there, it's kind of like breaking them apart into two separate pieces and you can do them separately. If you're just now learning how to do this though, I don't recommend trying to skip that step. I recommend just being very methodical about it. It would have only saved you like one line of writing and it's better to be sure that you did it um, correctly than to try to save this time. Okay. All right. So I mentioned that parentheses recommend, uh, meant, I mentioned that parentheses also represented brackets, but I forgot to mention that it also represents things like absolute values and square roots, okay? So absolute values are um, like a grouping symbol as well, and a square root is a big grouping symbol. So if you see an absolute value, think of that as a grouping symbol, as the parenthesis, this part of the please, or the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and you should do anything inside of it first. Now. Within there, if there are more grouping symbols, you want to do the innermost one first. Okay, so if you look at the whole thing, it's like, hey, look, I got these absolute values. I need to do stuff in there first. But like within that, I need to do the parentheses first. Okay, so if we look at that, let me get my highlighter back. I tried to put it as like a saved pen up on top, but it wouldn't let me do it. So. Within the, within the absolute value, we have to do the, ex, the parentheses first, and within the parentheses, we need to do the exponents first, okay? So this one, I'm going to write a whole bunch of stuff. Let me turn here so I can get a little more comfortable in the way I'm writing here. I need to 
do the two squared first and I'm gonna there's gonna be a bunch of steps so I might have to like I might like run into the next problem but then I'll squish it and move it over for you um, but so 5 plus the absolute value of 3 times 2 I'm not doing anything with that stuff plus let me keep my parentheses here just so I don't lose them I'm not gonna you don't want to drop the parentheses until you no longer have any um, operations within it so 2 squared is 4 minus 1 all right, and then get my absolute value back. Okay, so I still have parentheses. I need to keep working on that. So I get five plus absolute value of three times two plus four minus one is three. So there I go. Okay, it's looking a little cleaner, a little easier to look at now. Still need to work inside the, abs um, the absolute values. So now I've done um, all of the parentheses stuff. I've done any, there's no exponents, so I do multiplication and division. So I do five plus the absolute value of six plus three. All right, it's a lot easier to look at now. Um, the absolute value is still not gone though, so we need to keep working on it. Um, all that's left inside of there is addition, so six plus three is nine. All right, and actually let me just go over here, I'll scooch over. Um, absolute value of 9 is just 9. So 5 plus 9. Oh, put my little equals here. And then last thing, 5 plus 9 is 14. Okay. So that one was a, a little bit of work, but it wasn't too bad. Which one was the... You know, I think... It's been a while since I've looked at this, but I think this one here, this example, there's one that goes around Facebook every, like, they've been doing it for, like, 10 years, since pretty much since Facebook it, it became a thing. Um, there's, like, this, ex there's this math problem. It's like, what's the right answer? And people will just argue over it for, like, <laughs> for days. And it, it, com it comes back up every two years or so. Um, but I think this is the problem that shows up on um on Facebook a lot but and it's just because people aren't doing uh, order of operations uh, if it's not this one it's another one but now that you know order of operations you can argue with your friends on Facebook if you're not already you know if you're not getting enough of that already um, and but this time you can definitely be right <laughs> so if you just do order of operations uh, it could be this one I, I can't remember there's one of them I, I thought I put one in here but anyways let's move on so Remember, I said that parentheses, it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses are first. The parentheses only say like, hey, do me first if the, if there's stuff inside of it. It's saying, hey, do all the stuff inside of me first. Okay, well, in this one, there's nothing inside of it. It's just a number. Those parentheses are there just to tell you that that five is being multiplied by a negative two, not like five minus two okay so these parentheses here they represent multiplication they don't represent hey do me first okay so with that being said we have no parentheses in this example that represent you know grouping a uh, grouping symbol what we have are exponents so we're going to go to exponents so um, we have the two squared so I'm going to write everything else the way it is 20 times 2 divided by 2 squared is 4 plus, and then I'm just going to leave this as it is. Okay. All right. So now we do multiplication and division from left to right. And um, for me, it's like this. Let's see. Is that right for y'all? I think so. I, I mirrored my camera to try to make it go in the right direction so that I could say from left to right and it would make sense. Um, so in this case, we do have a string of multiplication and division. So it is really important that we do them in the correct order. So we have uh, 20 times 2 is 40. And then I'm just going to keep writing. I know it might feel, eh. I know it might feel tedious, but um, to be sure that you're doing it right is just to, to be careful and be tedious sometimes. All right, so 40 divided by 4 plus 5 times negative 2. Okay, so now we're still going from left to right, multiplication and division. 40 divided by 4 is 10. 
and then plus 5 times negative 2. All right. So now we're still on multiplication and division, so we need to do 5 times negative 2. So this is equal to 10 plus, now 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10. Now if you wanted to, you could rewrite this as um, 10 minus 10. You could have also left it as 10 plus negative 10 if you're comfortable with it that way. Um, I like rewriting it, makes it easier for me to look at. Because I know 10 minus 10 is 0. Okay. Let's move on. So with this next one, let's see what else we got back here. Sorry, I just wanted to give myself a heads up on what was coming. So with the next one, this time we have a bunch of parentheses, so we need to make sure we know which ones are representing. Hey, do the stuff inside of this one first. So um, in this case, we have one that has a negative 9 in it, so there's no operations in there, so we don't need to do that first. Um, and then we have another one with a negative 2 in it, once again. Don't have to do that first because there's nothing to do inside of it. But there is one inside the 4, um, the middle one, the 4 minus 2 squared. So let's do that one first. So everything else I'm just going to leave alone. 3 squared divided by negative 9 times. So within these parentheses, I need to do exponents first. So it's 4 minus 4, okay, plus... 5 times negative 2. All right. We're still working on those parentheses, okay? There's still stuff inside of them. Um, there's still stuff here going on, so we need to keep working on it. So everything else is just going to stay the same. 3 squared divided by negative 9 times 4 minus 4 is 0, okay? Plus 5 times negative 2. All right. So now we can do multiplication and division from left to right. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. We need to do exponents because we have um, an exponent there. So 3 squared is 9 divided by negative 9 times 0 plus 5 times negative 2. So this problem is one that I see students get a lot wrong a lot because they remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and they hear the, the my before the dear, and they think they're supposed to always do multiplication before division. You don't do multiplication before the division. You do multiplication and division at the same time from left to right, okay? So in this case, if you thought you needed to do multiplication first, you would get 9 divided by 0. And as we learned last time, anything divided by 0 is undefined. You can't do it, okay? So then they would get all flustered and uh, get the, the problem wrong. In this case, we can solve this problem because we just need to make sure we do everything in the correct order. So we have 9 divided by negative 9. Well, that is, oh, so we're doing multiplication and division from left to right. So 9 divided by negative 9 is negative 1 times 0 plus 5 times negative 2. Okay. Now we do negative 1 times 0, which is just 0, plus 5 times negative 2. Okay, well I can just get rid of that zero. I don't need to write that. I can just write five times negative two. And now the only thing left to do is five times negative two. So it is negative 10. Okay. Theoretically, I was supposed to leave a zero there and wait until I got to the addition and subtraction um, step. But we all know that zero plus anything is nothing. So it wasn't really um, changing the, um, the problem. So I did kind of go out of order, outside of the order of operations a little bit by dropping that zero, but it's okay. All right. So in this example, remember the parentheses step is any kind of grouping symbol. And I told you parentheses are grouping symbols. Um, so grouping symbols represent, um, they represent parentheses, they represent brackets, they represent exponent not exponents, where did that come from? They represent absolute values and they represent square roots, okay? So here, I actually have two, um, two grouping symbols. I've got this one right here and this one right here, okay? In this case, they're separated by um, a minus. So 
theoretically it doesn't matter which one we do first okay but I'm gonna just do the left to right thing because that's helpful when you see multiple grouping symbols like this um, you always want to do the innermost one first but if they're disjoint like this if they don't overlap in any way just do them from left to right if you keep that in mind it'll help you make sure you do it the same way every time so all right so I need to do the stuff inside that square root first so um, I have 102 plus negative 2 well that is the square root of 100 102 plus negative 2 um, is the same thing as 102 minus 2 which is 100 all right minus 9 minus 11 squared now if you're just really super excited about that square root of 100 equal and uh, 10 you can go ahead and do it it's fine because we're still working with that grouping symbol or you can go ahead and move on to the next um, set of parentheses I'm gonna just go ahead and do it because I'm really excited about it too so let's rewrite this okay now we need to work on the other grouping symbol which is the 9 minus 11 so we have 10 minus 9 minus oh sorry and to actually do 9 minus 11 9 minus 11 is uh, negative 2 squared okay so you want to be really careful when you have these negative numbers in um, being raised to powers okay because remember if you have a negative number raised to an even power you're gonna get a positive result if you have it raised to an odd power you're gonna get a negative result okay so if we have 10 minus so negative 2 squared is positive 4 so this whole thing is equal to 6 oh, I forgot to get a water okay so yeah so that's it for this packet 3 um, if you look at the um, the class content that I have listed over there um, I will have the full-on answer key for this there for you to find um, You'll also see a recording of this video, of this live stream. So if you need to review any of the answers or just see me go through it again, you can find it there. Okay, so we're done with that. We can go ahead and move on to the next uh, section. Okay, so let's just do a quick review of what we've talked about so far. So the first packet we talked about was types of numbers, sets of numbers. The second one was um, whole numbers. Remember whole numbers are the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, plus the whole or zero, zero looks like a whole. Um, and then we, the last one we did were integers. So remember integers are the whole numbers, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on, plus their opposites, negative one, negative two, negative three. So now we're going to start working on, if you remember from packet one, let's go down, 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 down. Okay. So if you remember from this one that we have whole, so we've already done like whole number stuff. We've done integer stuff. The next thing is like rational numbers. Those are things that can rep be represented by fractions or decimals. Okay. So let's start working on those. And that's what we're going to do in packet four okay so let's just do some introductory stuff to get us comfortable with with decimals again um so whenever you round a decimal uh, decimal number you want to um it you round it in the same way that you round a whole number really you go to the place and you look at the place in like to the the right of it and you say is that number less than or greater than five if, or if it's less than five then you round down if it's five or greater then you round up okay so um, the thing to remember here is that um, the names of the places okay so the decimal point is here and then the one all the way to the left is called the ones um, not all the way the, the next one to the left is ones and then tens and hundreds and then when it comes to decimals uh it starts with tenths th tenths <laughs> i have trouble saying it but it's like 10 but with a th on the end of it and then 100 but with a th on it so tenths hundredths <laughs> i'm like over enunciating it 
and doing a really bad job of it. Um, thousandths and then ten thousandths. Okay, so um, when you get to those places, it's, you know, notice it's kind of like one less than when you're going in the whole number section. Like, there's no one-th place, there's a tenth place, but there's no once place, so it's ten hundred thousand, it's uh, ten thousandths. So if I want to round um, 632.45 to the nearest tenths, that is talking about this place right here. So I want to look at the number right behind the 4, so the 5, and ask myself, is it 5 or greater? Um, yes, it is, so that means I need to round up. So it'll be 632.5. Okay? So in this example, I want to round to the nearest hundredth, so that is this place right here. So the, the one right after it is definitely 5 or bigger, so I need to round up again. But with this one, if we try to round the 9 up, we're going to get, let me just go ahead and write this, 9145. If we try to round the 9 up, um, we're going to get 10. So that means we actually need to round the, oh, crap, sorry. We actually need to take the 9, go up to 10, which would make the 6 go up to 7. So in this case, notice I put that 0 on the end there. Um, it's not required most of the time. It depends on, it depends on who, um, who your teacher is or whatever. Um, putting that 0 there is like a way, it's called like a significant digit. It lets them know that you rounded at that place. Um, it just depends um, if it's going to be required or not. Um, I like to put it there because it lets me know when I look at that number, oh, okay, I rounded to the hundredths here, like if I had just seen that number. Um, so I know how precise it is. It lets you know precision, okay? All right, so if I want to round 17.8 um, to the nearest whole number, that's uh, this number here, so that's just 18.0. And like I said, you can totally write it as just 18 if you want. Just um, it depends on what you're doing here. So like if you're in my class, I would just say you can just write the 18. You don't have to write the point zero. But if you wrote the point zero, I would be happy as well. Okay, and then here we need to round to the nearest thousandths. So that's the third place. That's one right here. So 3.12. Now that four um, right after it, is less than five so we're going to round down which means we leave the three there okay so let's talk about adding and subtracting decimals to add and subtract decimals um what you want to do is line up all of the decimal points and that'll help you line up the rest of the digits so if we have something like this okay and then 23.1201 and then three point um, if you want you can put the trailing zeros on there okay and then you just line up by the columns and add. So in the first column, I'm going to get a 1, then a 0. 8 plus 2 is 10, so I'm going to put the 0 there and then carry the 1. And then 6 plus 1 plus 1 is 8. Now I bring my decimal down. You bring that down. Um, and then 7 plus 3 is 10, plus another 3 is 13. So I put my 3 there and I carry my 1. I don't recommend putting it um, right here like that because then it would look like you were adding 17 the whole time. Um, by putting it where I stuck it, it, it lets you know that it's kind of like outside of the, um, the original problem. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay? Oh, my cat is trying to get my attention. Oh, come on. Can you go? Okay. If I don't, if I don't acknowledge them, then they'll just claw at me and, um, cause a ruckus probably pull my, my thing behind me down so let's see what happened oh here he comes again you coming okay you can sit here. 
You want to say hi? This is Keo. He says hi. Okay, you can sit in my lap. All right. Sorry. Now he's going to put his tail in my face. Because he has a fluffy tail and he likes to dust my face with it. Okay, so to do subtraction, you do the same thing. You want to line everything up by a decimal place. So I have 100. Now it's hard to see because I'm trying to get around the, the cat tail here. Um, and then 99.36. So I'm going to put a point zero zero here to put some trailing zeros. Oh, Keo, come on. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, now I'm just going to be hugged on. Okay. All right. So when you want to perform... <laughs> okay, sorry, you can't see him very well, but he is here and he is demanding a bunch of hugs. Um, so <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, okay. I'm trying to subtract this thing here. Okay. He's lying down. So with this first one, I want to do the, um, the six, but, and I want to subtract it from zero. So I'm going to have to do some borrowing. I need to turn that zero into a 10. And the way I do that is by borrowing something from the previous one. So I'd cross this one out and make this one a nine. So now I can do 10 minus six, which is four. And luckily the nine minus three, I can do that. I don't have to do any more borrowing. Okay. So I can do nine minus three, which is six. Okay. Well, now I need to do some borrowing again because I've got, okay, buddy, can you go over here for me? Nope, nope, nope. Can you go get in your basket? Okay. okay. I'm sorry. There you go. Okay. So, um, I need to subtract nine from the one, the, um, the zero. You could, maybe you see like, well, I got 100 minus 99. It's just one. But if you want to do it like methodically, you would say, okay, I need to subtract, um, I need to borrow, I need to make this 10, so I need to borrow from the 9 over here, okay? But that one was a 0, it didn't really have anything to borrow, right? So um, I can't really borrow from that and make it a, a 9, I also need to borrow from this one. so. I'm going to have, uh, make this one a nine and then make this one a zero. So I like made everyone going down one less than it was. Okay. Um, so now I have 10 minus nine, which is one and then nine minus nine, which is zero. So the 1.64. Okay. Oh, what happened here? Why will it not roll down? So addition and subtraction with decimals, you want to line up the decimal. Honestly, I usually tell people just to do it in the calculator. When it comes to decimal addition and subtraction, decimal multiplication and division, it, there's there's no there's not many reasons why you need to be able to do it by hand. Um, most of us carry calculators around all the time. I remember when I was in school, my teachers would be like, "Well, you're not going to have a calculator with you at all times." Little did they know, I do have a calculator with me at all times. It's called a cell phone. Okay, so. You probably don't need to do it by hand, but it is helpful to know um, how to do it, just in case, I don't know, your phone's dead or something, whatever. So let's uh, scroll down. Now let's talk about multiplication and division. Or I'm sorry, we'll just do multiplication first. To multiply decimals, you the easiest way to kind of think of it is you just multiply it as if there were no decimals. Just ignore the decimals and multiply it the same way you would do whole numbers. You do your, like, this one times that one times that one, kind of, like, back and forth. Then, at the end, you add up all of the decimal um, places, and then you move the decimal over that many. So, let's just first, let's just look at this one, this first example, and I'll show you what the answer is so you can see where the decimal comes in, okay? So, if I, hopefully, where's my mouse? Here we go. So, 103... 0.7 times 0.32. Okay, so notice here, and I think the mouse, okay, yeah, the mouse is showing. Notice here you've got the 7 
and right before here it goes one over, right? So that's one. And if we start here, we go two, three. So this is a total of three places from the right, right? So when we perform this multiplication, we're gonna get 33.184, and what we'll do is we'll start here and we'll go one, two, three. And that tells us where the decimal is. Okay? So now that we've kind of seen it, let's try let's try to do it, okay? So take some of the pressure off by knowing the answer to. Let me scroll down. Dang. Okay. So 103.7 times 0.32. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply that 2 by everything. Okay, so I do the 2 times 7, which is 14, so I do the 4 there, and then put the 1 up at top. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 2 times 0 is 0, that was easy. 2 times 1 is 2, put that there. Okay, now I do the 3. 3, oh, and because we're moving over 1, we put a 0 here, okay, and then 3 times 7. Um, let me use a different color, actually, so that my, my carries and stuff will all... So I put a 0 there. 3 times 7 is 21, so I put a 1 here, and then I carry my 2. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, so I put a 1 there, carry the 1. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and then 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so hopefully I did it right, and it all gets me 33.184. So if I add everything up, let me get my black color back. So I get 4. Ooh, that's too thick. I don't know why this pen is like this black one is way thicker than the red one. I like the thinness of the red one. Maybe it's just the way I was holding it. Okay, so four, and then seven plus one is eight, zero plus one is one, two plus one is three, and three plus nothing is three. So now here's where we do the um, the addition, like count how many places they have. So here's one place, two, three places. So we go one, two, three, and that puts our decimal point right there. Okay, let's try it with the next one. And I feel like I'm gonna need a little bit more room. So let's squish this a smidge. Squish and scooch. Okay, now let's do the next one. Why will it not let me scroll at this bar with my I don't know why it's being such a butthead. Okay, so 1.2345 times 0.12. Okay, and let me uh, do, I kind of, I like doing it in two different colors. So I'll start, do the first roll in black and then the second one in red. Okay, 2 times 5 is 10, so we put a 0 there and carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so now let's go move on to the 1, and I always like when I get the 1s because those are super easy. You just write 1 times everything is just the same thing, so 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 1 is just 1. cat is chewing on stuff. He's chewing on his basket that I stuck him in. Okay, so I got a zero. Um, so I'm adding everything up now. Nine plus five is 14, so I put a four there and carry my one. Six plus four is 10, plus another one is 11. Carry my one. Four, ten, four plus three is seven, plus one is eight. Two plus two is four, and then one plus nothing is one. So now I need to count my decimal places. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's all the way over here. Okay. So, um, a thing to kind of notice is with both of these, the number we got 
was smaller, right? But I feel like I didn't count that one right. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, sorry, I just needed to make sure I counted it right. Um, it wasn't feeling right to me. So, um, just double check when you count them. You can also just check with the calculator if you want, but um, it does help to know how to do it. Okay, let's see. What did I say here? Move the decimal point of the divisor all the way to the right. Okay, so I actually wrote down steps that are different, a little different than I would normally do it. So I want to make sure that I do it the same way. Okay, so I want to do um, 10.22 divided by 0 0.002. Okay, so this one is the dividend and this one is the divisor. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.002 divided by 10.22 okay so what this is saying to do is to move the decimal point um, all the way to the right on the divisor so remember the divisor is the one on the outside so I'm gonna move it one two three places right there so I'm going to redo it as two okay then I need to move um, the decimal point on the dividend the same number of places it was moved in step one. So one, two, three. So I would put a trailing zero here. Okay. And then boom. So I would end up getting one zero two two zero and then the decimal point needs to be exactly where it was on the um, in the dividend okay so let's do this we're gonna do essentially we're saying instead of doing 10.22 divided by 0 0.002 we're gonna do 10 um, 10,220 divided by 2 okay so kind of what we did was we multiplied both by a thousand and we're going to perform that division once we do stuff with fractions you'll see why this is actually okay we're doing this thing called like we're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the exact same number so it's okay to do that right so um, yeah let's see how this will end up so 2 goes into full um, Sorry, 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 minus 10 is 0. Okay, bring down my 2. 2 goes into 2 1 time. Alright, 2 times 2 is 2. These all are ending up pretty nice. It's almost like I did this on purpose. Okay, and so then 0, and I'll bring that 2 down. And then 2 goes into 2 1 time, leaving me with 2. So then I get zero, and then I bring the zero down and just get two goes into zero, zero times, so you just do zero. So five, one, one, zero. And let's just do point zero, let's just double check it. Because I'm not trusting myself on this one for some reason. Ooh. Because I did it backwards, it helps if I do it right. 10.22 divided by 0 0.002. 5110. Okay, so let's try it for the next one. So this time I have 0 0.03. What time is it? Okay, divided by 24.26. So I'm going to move this over one, two. Move this one over one, two. So that's where the decimal should end up being. So let's 
scooch that over so it'll be three going into two four two six and my decimal will be here okay so three goes into two no times so I'm going to try three going into 24 three goes into 24 um, is that eight eight times yes eight times because eight times three is 24 bring that zero down okay so three goes into two zero times so let's bring the six down as well three goes into 26 um eight right why am i not i cannot do division today my brain is like farting on me where's my mouse here we go because three times eight is 24 right okay that's right <laughs> i didn't think it was right <laughs> so i'll get the 24 okay three times eight is 24 okay and then three goes uh that's the two so this one is going to give me um, some problems here. So then I got the t zero. So three goes into 20. Um, three times. Um, so it's not seven, so it's six. Because three times six is um, 18. Okay, and then I get a two. So you're gonna see here that I'm getting like, I'm gonna keep getting like this, this two and I'm gonna have to keep going, okay? So three goes into 26 times and then I got an 18 and then, oh, I got the two again and you're gonna keep getting this over and over and over again. So I'm actually gonna get 0.666666 forever and ever or you can say 0.6 repeating. Okay, let me, um do it this way because I ran out of room 808.6 repeating okay if you do this in the calculator um, you'll get 24.26 divided by 0 0.03 and you see it'll say like 66666 forever and then it'll do the seven that's because it rounded to the last decimal um, it rounded that last place it couldn't go any further so um, the way you represent it, represent that is just put the little um, thing over it. So, let's see, we do still have a little bit of time going here. Um, let's move to the next. Oh, that's why. I <laughs> because I was, uh, I was like, why would I put this one here? This one's like, it was freaking me out that I had all these, this repeating decimal here. Because I wanted to show, um, sometimes when you have a repeating decimal, you like we just did you're going to use that little bar that goes over it that is called a vinculum okay and the way you represent it is by putting the bar over the part that repeats it's not always just one number that repeats so luckily for that one it was just one number that repeated because i would have probably gone a long time before i found the the repeat if it wasn't with this one um like this one two three repeating notice these are the numbers that repeat the one two three so the way you would write that one is you do zero point one two three and then put the bar over that that tells you that the one two three one two three keeps going over uh, forever and ever now you can also have it it doesn't have to be um not every decimal has to actually repeat like in this one you have two decimals and then you have a um the five that repeats so when it comes to rational numbers remember rational numbers can be represented as a fraction okay so or a decimal okay so this one these decimals here like they're still rational numbers because you can actually represent them as um fractions so like this one here like that was a fraction i did three the um two four two six over three that was the fraction okay so even though it was a repeating decimal or an infinite decimal it still could be represented as a fraction so irrational numbers are when they can't be represented as fractions when they're infinite but there's no repetition to them okay 
So um, let's talk about something a little easier, which is multiplying by a, a power of 10. So if you want to multiply by a power of 10, you essentially just move the decimal point over to the left that many times. Okay, so if I want to do, um, I'm sorry, to the right, or you pop a, you pop a zero, that many zeros on the end. Okay, so if I want to do five, um, 52 times 10, you count how many zeros are on the 10, and that's how many zeros you're going to add. Um, if it's a decimal, um, that's how many places over you would move the decimal. Okay, so um, 52 times 10 would be 5, 2. So if you think of the decimal here, it needs to go over 1, 10. Okay, um, if it's divided, you're going to go in the opposite direction. So 5, 0.2. Okay. So in 4.35, I have two zeros on my 100, so I need to move it over two places to the right. So 4.35, um, 4.35 divided by 100, I need to move it two places to the left. So I have the 4.35, but if it's here, I need to go 1, 2. Okay. Um, 0.32 times uh, 10,000, so that's going to be 3, 2. And then I need to move, like, so it was here, so there's four zeros, so I need to go one, two, three, four. So it would be right there. And then, if I have the point three, two, I, and I want to do four in the front, essentially, so it's here, and one, two, three, four. And then my decimal goes there. Okay. So, um, um, yeah, I've, instead of, okay, I actually, I have a little bit, I have enough time to cover this. So, um, this whole, why am I talking about multiplication and division by 10? Because I want to lead into stuff with fraction or with percentages. Um, percentages are um, percent, it means percent, percentum or per 100. Um, so 17% means 17 per 100, um, which the per means like really means division, 17 divided by 100. So if you have something like 40%, um, that's the same thing as 40 over 100. So remember what I was just talking about with dividing by 100. That means move the decimal over one, two places to the left, right? So if I have 40% and I, that's the same thing as 40 divided by 100, that means just move the decimal two places to the right. So that's the same thing as 0.4. And I'll just put the zero on there so you can see like it's one, two. So if I have 125%, that's the same thing as moving the decimal one, two places, so 1.25. Um, and then you can go the other way. Um, if you have a decimal and you want to write it as a percent, you need to multiply it by 100. So 0.55, you move it one, two, that's 55%. Or 234 is 230 percent because I move it one two okay so if the percent symbol is there and you need to make it a decimal then you need to move it to the left okay and if the percent symbol is not there and you need to go from a decimal to a percent then you move it to the right so you will do that a lot if you take like a stats class because you'll have to do a lot of things where you get a decimal answer and then you want to know the probability and the probability is usually represented as a percent um, but you'll also so you'll go like from decimal to percent a lot in that case but you'll go from percent to decimal a lot if you want to actually perform any kind of operations with percentages because to perform an operation with a percent you want to first convert it to a decimal okay so this is where I was wondering to see if I had enough time. Yeah, um, but I'm going to leave this for the next next one, okay, so that I can 
because these two things kind of go together and I would rather just do them um, at the same time. So yeah, so uh, next time I'll talk about how to perform some operations with percentages and then do some like pretty common word problems that you see with them. Um, and yeah, and then we'll be done with that and we'll go on to doing fractions. So um, see you next week. I hope this is helpful. If you want the answer keys for, I, I won't be putting packet four's answer key up until I'm done with it next week, but I will go ahead and put pa packet three's answer key up. It'll be on the website that's listed over on the side. Cool. Thanks.